See, the thing about having a new camera is that now you can see how uneven my foundation is. Anyway, hi friends, welcome back to the vlog. If you are new here, hi, my name is Alexis Barber, I'm 23. I live between Brooklyn and LA and I'm a brand founder, I work full time at YouTube and a content creator. So, I'm coming at you today with another weekly vlog. I left you off in my last weekly vlog telling you about how I was starting to experience burnout and it was bad. Uh, I've never felt like that in my life and I'm still not completely over it, but I took some time off of work. My manager was really supportive of me taking time off and so I've spent the last week just, you know, like settling down. Jeff and I went to Newport, Rhode Island for the weekend and I really disconnected and then um, I've been home just like doing whatever makes me feel good for the past few days and um, that's sort of like what I had to really stop and do and at first when I took time off I was like oh I'm gonna like work on building these routines and do all this stuff that I've been putting off and then I was like wait I need to trust myself like I've gotten to where I am now by trusting myself. I don't need to keep trying to like force different routines and changes onto me. So, preaching over. It is Thursday afternoon on, what is today? October 13th. And I am now, oh shit. And I just wanna tell you what I've done today. So I woke up, I went to Dumbo House. Jeff has been sleeping over like every night because he's literally obsessed with me. It's crazy, honestly. I'm just kidding. But I woke up. When he sleeps over, I just don't do my morning routine, which is bad. But he, we're opposite sleepers. And now that the sun is coming up later, I'm like not like, you know, getting up at 6 a.m. like I should. But anyway, I slept in and then I went to Dumbo House and I worked there. I officially started reaching out to influencers to gift them the too cozy robe because we are officially going to reopen our doors in mid-november i also talked to someone about shooting some content for that i ordered some more packaging so i ordered some sticker sheets to go in them and then i planned out how i'm going to do the influencer boxes one interesting thing about this is that i was deciding between if I do like an influencer party or if I do gifting and do like a really cool well shot commercial. Not commercial, but you know, like an ad spot. And I was like, oh, I can do both, I can do both. And then I had to stop myself. And I think that like something I've had to really learn so far as a business owner is the art of prioritization. And I talk about this in my podcast all right, I'll do an episode about it, like probably next week about prioritization, but basically like I am someone who wants to do a lot of things, but when you're in a business and you're one person doing everything, obviously I have contractors, but I'm the only person running this, I wouldn't have been able to plan a launch party, gifting, and a commercial all in the same week because that's how it would have fallen in so as much as I wanted to do that I was like okay let's do a launch party or some sort of party next year and that's okay because we have lots of different SKUs that are coming out next year so it'll be all right okay so did all of that then I came home and a new sample of the robe had arrived so I reviewed it and sent the info to my contractors um, or to my manufacturing partners Here's what it looks like. Um, this is not the color I would do. I would do this in a different color, but it's a gorgeous material. I really like the material. Um, and I shared on Instagram stories the initial thoughts on it, and I'm doing a bunch of polls right now about like what you guys want. So you should totally follow me on Instagram so you can get all that tea. But the reason I started vlogging is because I suffer from always getting an afternoon slump. After I eat lunch, you can't fucking play with me anymore. Like, my brain is just dead. And I figured out how to get over that. And it's to separate your day, basically. So I do my morning, and once I have lunch, instead of trying to go straight back into work, I go into a mindless task so that I can basically, it's like the morning again. It's like when you go on your morning walk, you know? I do that again so that I can get into like, uh, so then when I'm done with that, I'll be like re-energized and ready to work. So that's either a workout 
a, a walk. For me right now, I just cleaned my apartment for like 30 minutes. Um, and also while I've been off work, I've been taking midday baths. <laughs> um, but you can also take a midday shower. All of that is like really helpful for me to take a step back and then like be able to jump into work. So I just did that and I'm gonna sit down and make a list of things I need to do. Then I'll probably also take a midday shower because midday showers are elite. And I've been rambling for like 47 minutes now, so I'll talk to you later. I know I'm crooked, I'm sorry, but it's much later in the day today and I am so fucking mad because at 6.30 I predicted my hunger times and I lined it up with my reality television of the evening and I ple and I had a gift card, or not a gift card, like a promo on Uber Eats, so I ordered an expensive dinner because I got like 40% off. They couldn't find a dasher. So it's literally past eight o'clock now and I haven't eaten and I'm really upset because I'm hungry and I don't have anything in my house. So I just placed a new order but it's not gonna get here for another 20 or 30 minutes. But I'm just hangry, whatever. But I just wanted to talk to you because I washed my hair, feels so nice. And I have been like sitting and doing like all these little things. It's like I have all these big things on my to-do list to do for the business, right? Like marketing stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then I sit down for eight hours and like I do a bunch of stuff that wasn't on the list, but it still needed to be done. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, it's just never ending. What I just finished doing though was going over our financials and baby girl, let me tell you something right now. It's giving dead. It's giving, like people say, being an entrepreneur is like so glamorous, luxurious, whatever, but like I have never been broker in my life than all the money I have poured into the road business, like poured. And I completely understand why people don't start businesses. And also, oh, did we lose a contact? Oh, thank God that didn't go in my eye. I literally ripped my contact out of my eye on accident. Basically, everything has cost about 50% more than I thought it was going to cost. So I've been taking out personal loans. I'll just be honest, like that's how I've financed my business, personal and business loans, because I didn't want to take investors. There's lots of different ways you can fund your business, but I didn't want to take investors because I didn't want to answer to anybody. And I just feel like it's a great learning experience, but it's such a huge, huge privilege that I do not take for granted that I'm able to do this because like, it just gets more and more expensive and if I didn't have a full-time job like what if I had quit my job and like just focused all on this like I wouldn't have a basic like healthy lifestyle or whatever to be able to to do this so I think a lot of people are always like if you have a good business idea whatever quit your day job bet on yourself and there's been many times where I'm like I want to bet on myself and just quit and focus on it but I not only have a full-time job with great benefits but I have a job that I actually love and so as long as you can balance it you should because this shit gets expensive honestly and so it's making me just be really grateful for my life and all my opportunities and makes me really want to just go hard and do so well at this because so many people don't get the opportunity to start a business that they are so passionate about so it's so scary but I feel a sense of like I'm I don't know I'm just happy that I'm doing it you know like I'm not um, like I'm so scared because it's like so much money and it's really like everything I've ever had but I also know that I can rebuild so I am excited and I need to stop talking about it because it's sending my heart rate into oblivion so it is nighttime now and I'm going to watch TV and go to bed. But one thing about me, y'all, I have not been able to be watching TV like right before bed because I keep um, like the, look here in the mirror, the show keeps coming into my dreams. And I've been watching like very toxic reality television about certain women in California. Like we watched Selling the OC which like was just like an overall toxic show like it wasn't even fun to watch anymore because the girls were just so and because there was men in it like I think in any of the shows where there's men who are like being who are involving themselves in the drama I just hate that it just doesn't sit well with me so anyway that was toxic and then I watched two episodes of Housewives last night before going to bed and like they just show up in my dreams and it gets really toxic and all about like social media and people being mean to people and stuff like that and I just can't listen to that. So I'm gonna watch 
TV right now, but I'm gonna read a book before I go to bed because otherwise, like, I feel like it's gonna, like, fuck up my sleep. So, peace out. Also drinking my absolute favorite in the entire world, best sparkling water out there, Canada Dry Sparkling Water. Well, best, it's not the best, it's the crispiest, but I can never find it in bottles like I do my Perrier, so I love her, though. It's Friday! And I'm overwhelmed. So... Let me show you my to-do list for the day. So I can't believe I forgot to vlog. I had too much to do. But it's currently like 12.30 and like I had so fucking much to do today. I am so overwhelmed. Like I'm so overwhelmed. So I got up, I went on a walk, I came back and then I started getting like going hard on this to-do list. And I did, the main thing I wanted to talk to you guys about that I did is something called, is like time multiplying. So I've talked about this before, but basically like time management is not enough if you are someone who is doing lots of different things at once. Time management is managing your 24 hours a day, but like people who do a lot, they multiply their time. They don't just manage it. So um, an example of that is, I have a guest every single week on my podcast, but booking those guests, the back and forth with assistants, the reminding them that it's going to happen, it takes a lot of time and brain space out of my week to have to deal with those bookings and have to deal with like figuring that shit out. So today I spent about an hour just creating a better booking system so I can send the guest a link and then I have everything I need to record on my side. Everything is scheduled. It just goes automatically into my calendar and I know when I have what I need to do. And that's a form of multiplying my time because now every week I won't spend 30 minutes like on emails back and forth booking shit and I will have that time back. So I got all that done and I'm also, I posted on Instagram and TikTok um, and I feel overwhelmed right now, but I absolutely know, and this is why you have to like keep track of who you are and like do a lot of self-reflection is like, I'm not just over, I'm not overwhelmed right now because everything on my to-do list is very easily doable in the next like four hours, which is how much time I have before I next, my next meeting. I'm just hungry. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just hungry. Like, I have to make two calls, plan my week next week, reschedule a few things. All these things are gonna take 10 minutes. And I'm over here like, and that's when I say, okay, Lexi, we're taking an hour off. We're taking a lunch break. We just worked since 8.30, it's 12.30. We just did, what is that, four or five hours straight. You look a mess, you feel a mess, let's go eat something, Jesus. So I am going to go to DeKalb Market Hall across the street and get some sushi. Today I have another meeting with my robe manufacturers. We met on Monday, but I have a big decision I have to make right now. So we need to talk in person about it. This is just like very confusing. Basically my terry cloth robe, like the one that's just like a towel, I loved it, loved the material, but the material pricing came back really expensive and I was like, that doesn't make sense, it's just terry cloth. Then after using it for about three months now, like like using it every, like, you know, every day trying to like keep up with it or whatever, I discovered that the material didn't hold up long term the way I wanted it to. So, I'm not happy with that, which means I probably can't launch it in January. So I had wanted to do it around that like new year, new me marketing campaign, but I realized like, girl, if I, the last thing I ever am going to do is launch a product I don't believe in fully, therefore, I am not going to launch it early if I don't have to. But the other thing is, we got a sample back for the jersey version of the robe, which comes out to be a lower price and is really cute, but they would need me to place that order. It's called a purchase order, a PO. So anytime I say PO, that's what I mean. They would want me to place a PO by today for January delivery of that robe, but I don't want it in that color. I want it in a different color. And I also haven't wear tested it for long enough to see if I really fuck with it or not. So 
what this means is like we will just have this one drop in the holiday season and probably we'll push the next drop to be in you know what is it called february but it is like annoying because of course it just changes my timeline but i i honestly always think that this type of thing like anything that changes or goes wrong with business like even when I had to like do pre-orders or whatever for my business, like I appreciate it because I'm just figuring shit out and it teaches me something. Like this teaches me that I need to prep my launches way further in advance and that's a good thing and it means that the business will be better for it long term. Like this is a long term game. This is not a short term situation here. So that feels good. And then later today, I am going to Jeff, Jeff's house, so my boyfriend lives in a gorgeous brownstone with his friends. And they're having a party tonight, a lease renewal party, because they're staying there for another year. And I am so excited, I'm gonna go hang out and chill. And then tomorrow, oh my God, I'm a social girl this weekend. Big social girl, especially with my college friends. It's very much a college friend weekend. Then tomorrow is my friend Izzy's birthday party in the day. And then in the evening, I am ha my friend Sara, she's Pakistani, and her girlfriend are cooking us dinner. Me and my other two friends from college, they're cooking us dinner, period. And I'm going to her house in Crown Heights. So I am a busy bee, I feel crazy, and that's why I feel like I need to get so much done, and that's why I'm literally stopping myself and being like, bitch, you need to eat and chill, because nothing is that deep. And I hope you remember that today, too. Love ya! Hey guys, the behind the scenes of entrepreneurship today is quite ugly. I don't know if I want to share it with ya. I don't, considering I haven't resolved it yet, but I thought that the original cost of shipping the my goods of my robes to the US was included in my original purchase order and then I realized it wasn't set and the estimate they gave me was doable and I baked that into my costs and then I actually got the final numbers back today because the robes are shipping soon and they are three times that and three times what it was is a lot of money and it does a lot of damage to my original plans and it, I literally had the feeling of like, I've never had this feeling before where you have to laugh because it's so... Because if you don't, you'll cry. And I never understood how people had that feeling. And I had that, like... I was purely in shock. And I am now currently so unwell. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to figure it out, obviously, because that's what I do. But And I might just have to eat the cost and that might just suck and be the biggest slap in the face, but now I understand why people take investors because investing my own money into this makes it all the more insane. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to a party at Jeff's house. I'm wearing this cute little local European top and these jeans, which I wore in LA to dinner once, so don't come for me. My hair was different, so it was a different outfit. And um, I'm going, it's only like seven right now, but I'm heading over there to eat dinner with Jeff. I don't even know when people get to parties these days because you know I don't go to parties. I, my friends and I have a very, very clear situation where we go to dinner and if we go out, we get home by midnight. Like, come on, please. What I need to be outside for? Like, come on. But I don't really know how it'll be at Jeff's house. Because it's where the roomies. So, whatever. I'm going to have to take the train and go over there. I don't want to take the train either. I'm going to wear a big giant hoodie and a mask so that nobody speaks to me. Good shit. Really good shit, Alexis. Alright, it's going to be fine. because, And I understand why people say that entrepreneurs... You have to be really delusional because I, like, the only thing keeping me going is delusion. Good morning. I don't think I've ever looked worse. You know what I need right now? I, my eye patches. And I don't have any in this apartment. <laughs> Good morning, friends. It is quite literally 11 o'clock a.m. I woke up at 9.30. I went to 
Jeff's house party yesterday and Jeff lives with college friends but they're all different ages. Some of them are younger than me, um, some are older. So, so many Northwestern people were there of all ages, backgrounds, whatever, and it's like half of it, like, people don't, like, Jeff is super introverted, so people forget that, I don't know, that I would be there because, you know, like, they weren't expecting to see me, like, because they were go there for, like, other friends or whatever, and we all have just, like, random connections, you know? So it was a crazy time. Um, uh, time flew, and I literally was there just hanging out until 2 a.m., and, like, the party didn't seem like it was going to stop, lol, and that's just super late for me. So I came home. I was going to sleep over there, but I came home. And I went to bed at 2 a.m. And I woke up with, I had the craziest dreams. Every time I drink, I have the craziest dreams. And I have a horrible headache because I took tequila shots. I woke up, immediately grabbed the ice roller, ran a like warm bath, drank some electrolytes, and took some Excedrin. And now I'm back in business, baby. Looking like a mop, genuinely. So. It's been an hour and a half of recovery, and I now feel ready to go. This is why I don't go out, because it's you lose the next day. Um, and I'm going to go get a bat, P-H-A-T, iced coffee, and go on a walk, because it is a stunning 60 degree and not a cloud in the sky day. So the girls are quite happy so then I'm gonna get ready it's like a big college weekend for me it, I think it's actually literally homecoming right now I think it's so funny that none of us are at homecoming we are all here in New York I'm going to my friend my college friend Izzy's birthday party oh my god I should get a gift it's so very funny story so now that I have an apartment here in New York and an apartment in LA I'm confusing what is near each apartment because I was like because my go-to gift is a candle so I was like oh I'll just go to the candle store because I live near a really cool candle store in LA there's not a candle store over here so I gotta figure out what I'm gonna get her so yeah I'm going to get go on a walk find a gift to get Izzy then tonight I'm going to dinner with my college friends or no we're going to my friend's house so I should get a house, a little gift too. Gift giving is my love language. I love to give a gift because I will not respond to your text, but I feel like if I give you a little something, then you won't hate me because you'll have to look at it every day and be so grateful that I entered your life. Perhaps it's manipulative and my necklines are driving me crazy. Time to start this day. I don't know what time anything is happening, by the way. So I should probably figure that out. Hi guys, I just got back from my walk and shop trip and the cutest kid was in my elevator. He is, he's dressed as a fire chief and he has a little, let me set myself up correctly before I speak to you. So yeah, the cutest kid. My building is a lot of families, which is why I like it. Like downtown Brooklyn was very much that. Like downtown Brooklyn doesn't really have like a culture. It's more of like everything is here. There's a lot of new buildings, I feel like. Um, and then there's like Brooklyn Heights and stuff, which is like old brownstones and stuff like that. And then like all of them, you know, collect or whatever. But there's a lot of families because there's a lot more space in Brooklyn. So there's this cute little kid. He was dressed in like a fire chief outfit. And he had a little megaphone and a little fire extinguisher. And he was like saying into the megaphone, stay safe, stay safe through the whole lobby. And then we got an elevator and he put, he, he had such good manners. He was like, which floor? And I told him which floor. And he was like, press the button for me. Like cutest thing I've ever seen. But I had such a like delightful walk. I'm in such a good mood despite my like lingering hangover. But I went to Barnes and Noble. My favorite place on earth, y'all, like, I was such a reader growing up, like, I quite literally was, most pictures you find of me, like, I was reading, girl, like, I loved reading, 
And so, like, Barnes & Noble is literally my happy place. Like, I go there when I don't need books. Like, I have four unread books on my on my bookshelf right now, and I'm only going to be in New York for another two weeks. Like, I did not need to get four new books, especially because I like to get them on Audible, too. But, like, I just was in the mood. Like, right now, I'm really looking for books about a specific, like, I used to read a lot about self-help, self-transformation, startups, etc. And now that I have a startup, I'm like, okay, there are specific things I need help with in my brand, and that's the book that I'm looking for. So today I got, first of all, this one is separate, but it's Burn, How Grit, Innovation, and a Dash of Luck Ignited a Multi-Million Dollar Success Story. So this is by the founder of Chesapeake Bay Candle, and I just thought this would be a helpful book for me because it's a similar industry like candles robes like obviously they're different but you know it's a memoir and I feel like the things that I learn the most from are not like instruction manuals on how to start a business it's experiences that other people have had so I'm really excited to read this and it looks pretty short so yeah but it's cool I mean that's such a cool experience so then I got HBR's 10 must reads on entrepreneurship and startups. I got this as something because like I said, I don't love a ton of like instruction manuals on business, but I saw my favorite influencer and entrepreneur, Mariana Hewitt was posting an HBR um, review that she had bought about like a different subject. They have tons of different subjects and it's like 10 articles from Harvard Business Review about startups and stuff. So I think this will be good for like reading in the daytime or I want to read one article a day or something like that for when I'm short on time and then I got another one called building a story brand so I want my brand to obviously tell a really good story and that's something I've been struggling to figure out how to do. like I know what it is in my head but I've been struggling to like get it on paper and make sure that it's translated properly so I really think this will be helpful and then I also got Deepak Chopra's The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success because um, I really want to eliminate like any self-doubt because like I told you guys yesterday when I was in crisis um, or when I was coming down from a crisis like I feel like when you're in those experiences it's really hard if you have any like speck of self-doubt left in you because that is what will jump out so I wanted to get a book about spirituality and success and just try to like work through that for me but then I went to Sephora to get a gift for my friend's birthday this is the best fucking gift like genuinely on the planet like you guys are quite literally by all means need to get this for everyone get it for yourself I don't care this is the Laneige hydrate and snooze like little kit I wanted to take the price off I'll have to take it off but this is a cute little version of these three things which I use these three items quite literally every day like I don't use both of these moisturizers together but right now I just use one or the other like they are so good. Laneige knows how to do moisture. Like I am genuinely obsessed with these products. So I am so happy that I found this because it's such a good gift. I'm gonna give it to everybody. I'm actually gonna give it to everybody. Like I'm also, I am sending out influencer gift boxes soon and I'm like, I wanna give this to everybody because they're so good. Like I just love. So I'm gonna give her this and then some other PR that I have and then what's shopping for a gift for a friend unless you don't buy if you don't buy something for yourself so I got this Laneige little oh it's kind of dirty whatever um this little Laneige minis because when I travel like these are my girl these are my favorite products but I don't have minis of them and I could never find minis and that and then I found a whole thing of minis so this has Cleansing Foam, Hydro Hyaluronic Acid Serum, Cream Moisturizer, the Water Sleeping Mask, and the Lip Sleeping Mask. This is a full face of nighttime skincare to take with me when I travel. When am I traveling next? Literally just Thanksgiving. Like this year, I did not travel as much as I wanted to because I'm investing so much money and time into the robes that like I don't have time to travel. So, or at least to travel internationally is what I mean. Like I've obviously traveled between New York and LA. That's kind of just like all I've been doing. So yeah. And then because I haven't had it in probably three months. I haven't had it since before I moved to LA. I haven't had kava since July. It's October. 
This is my favorite. I'm so happy. Look, they changed the bags. Can you believe it? So happy. So I'm gonna sit and eat this and then I have to decide what I'm gonna fucking wear. Oh Lord. Ooh girl, hello. What's the tea? It's Sunday night and I don't think I've talked to you guys in a hot minute, but I decided on a whim to actually go on a spontaneous trip to Philadelphia tomorrow. So if you're unfamiliar, I don't talk about it very much, but I was accepted to a Wharton MBA program. Wharton is like a, is a business school in Philly when I was a senior in college. So you get in as a senior and then you have to work for two to four years before you actually matriculate and go to school. And they're asking um, if I want to go next year or the following year. And I haven't completely ruled business school out. I think it'll be a good experience for me. I just like don't know, you know, timing. It's never like a, nothing is ever like perfect timing, you know, but I do know I really want to go and work on the robes. And I think like it'll be a good experience for that. Um, so long as financially it makes sense. So. They have a big tour where you can sit in on classes and stuff tomorrow and I decided since I've never been to Philly, I've never been to Wharton because I did all my applications and stuff during the pandemic that I would go and check it out because I am on PTO this week again so I feel like it's a good time to go check it out. So I'm trying on outfits right now because my train leaves at like 7am and it's supposed to maybe rain tomorrow and it's supposed to be like a regular another cold fall day so i wanted to find the perfect new england outfit and the vibes are not vibing like nothing in my closet is calm from oh this could work no never mind awful this blazer is just so long it just doesn't make any sense but i think like the basis of this Cream sweater and jeans is good, but maybe instead of cream sweater and jeans, I do cream sweater, black bottoms, blazer. Because also I was trying the other, this other blazer, and I think this looks cute. It's this oversized H and M blazer, right? And like that could be cool, but it is certainly a little like obviously I'm here because it's a business school tour, but. I actually just think I should just leave it at this and not worry anymore. And then I'll wear these boots in my bag and we'll be good to go. Yeah. Because I just don't have to, I just can't right now. But it is Sunday evening, which means Real Housewives of Potomac is airing. In addition to that, I just ordered pizza because I have a, I had a 50% off like Thing, and I'm so excited to eat the pizza. So that's what I'm gonna do. When I'm all dressed. I'm still gonna sit down while I watch TV and like quote plan my week because I have a lot going on this week even though I'm off work. Like I forget how much time, like being off work makes me really realize how much time I spend with content creation and the robes because I'm still working like eight hours a day and it's so crazy to me that I like fit that in. Like, obviously tomorrow I probably will all, like, work on the train and stuff, but not, like, it won't be like, oh, I'm working. It's like, I'm going to edit. I don't really know, guys. I need to write a newsletter. I need to do the podcast. Um, I'm starting to think I might switch the podcast release day to be Tuesday because it stresses me out on Sunday nights. But I don't know. Whatever. Okay, I'm back. I have my pizza. I didn't show you guys, sorry. And I changed my robe. You might be able to hear the bath running because we're running a bath. I was going to watch the new episode of Potomac, but I think I told you guys in this vlog that I feel like when I've been watching reality TV, it's just been messing with my sleep and I feel like I don't really like sleep as well. And like, the sh it's just so much drama and it's like so crazy sometimes like i think because i get look i look like a fucking witch bro that was funny i can't it's giving spooky hashtag spooky season i also can't watch horror films i can't watch no like i think i'm just very sensitive to the tv shows i watch it's like very pro it's like so lame it's actually the lamest thing ever can't watch anything so, I'm going to take a bath with my vanilla candle from Bath and Body Works and read a book. 
It's giving elderly, and I love it. Good night, and I will see you in Philly. Good morning. We're going to college. JK, but not really. So we're up. I'm about to leave. Just putting final stuff into my bag. So I decided today to bring just my iPad and a book. That's the plan in this bag. Simply because it goes over my shoulder. So you like, or maybe I could take this one. It's a little less obnoxious. I think it might match my outfit better. So maybe I will. But the only thing is I had I ripped this one. Like the little the inside pouch. So that, I do think since it zips, it's better to take on the train. We are headed out. I woke up at five and I meditated and journaled. Can you believe it? And then I got all ready. I'm filming a little TikTok vlog today too. So that is why I am just now saying hello to you on this Friday morning. Let's see. This is actually such an exceptional bag. It really is. So, we love that, and it zips. So, we'll take that. Yeah, I honestly, I'm going to save the portion of the vlog where I talk about the trip to afterwards, because I really just don't know what to expect. So, see you on the Amtrak. Close your eyes to get away. Good morning, Maddies. It's the day after my Wharton trip. I am currently getting ready to go. I'm getting ready to go meet with someone for coffee, but I wanted to give you an update on my thoughts, my opinions on Wharton. So I went in, like I said to you guys yesterday, I was like, I'm gonna go in with no expectations because I really still, I feel like with business school, it's such a large financial and time investment, like that it's a very big decision to make. I mean, and a lot of people, especially in tech, don't think it's a very good idea, but I was, I've already been admitted, and I remember when I was like praying to get into business school, that I was like, if I get in, I'll go. Like, that's what I was saying to God, so I feel like my little personal guilt but anyway so I was pleasantly very impressed and surprised um, I also think that like me getting into this school specifically was such a blessing because it really does have like everything I would need and the fact that it is so so close to the city makes it all the more you know of a no-brainer so basically some things I loved were I think Wharton, um, since Wharton is technically the number one business school in the country, um, it gets a bad rap for being like very clicky and snobby, but I've actually found the opposite because when I was applying to business schools, I applied to Harvard, Columbia, Kellogg, and Wharton, and everyone I met at Wharton, like if I would message them on LinkedIn um, with questions, every single one of them answered me. and during the application process they had a separate like application like guidance session for black students led by black students and i think that was a big thing for me that was like okay this shows that they care also i feel like in the world of like business and like black people in business everyone i've ever met who like went to wharton is incredibly not only they're all hot for some reason everyone's hot everyone's smart everyone has like the best job so like i really like was like i'm gas i'm like i'm a fan of this so all that being said i still was like okay is this gonna be worth my time and my money though because i have a business i have an incredible job that i love like does it make sense for me to leave those leave google and then move to philadelphia and 
be there for two years? And what I found the answer to be was absolutely. Simply because there are basically people in the class, people who end up going to Wharton have so many different experiences that it would be such a benefit to my business if I went there and was able to meet people who have worked in retail and could help me get my robes sold in stores or have worked in the supply chain and could help me find better manufacturers or have worked with, you know, corporate finance and could help me scale my business. So. I personally found it to be a genuine, like a very smart decision, and I am like really excited about that. So um, the question is just whether I go next year or the following year, and I need to do some personal, like financial deep dives, all this other stuff. But I am running late to this coffee chat, so we can talk about it when I get home. Back. So this coffee chat is with a woman who works at a really well-respected VC firm. Um, and so if you're unfamiliar, VC stands for venture capital and venture capital is like, um, all these funds that basically invest their money into companies and then provide them with in like investors and resources and stuff to grow. VC is not a route I'm interested in taking, um, because when you do VC, when they give you money, they take a little bit of ownership in your company. So instead of me owning it 100%, and one day it's worth a million dollars and I sell it for a million dollars, I get to keep the million dollars instead of the VC firm who took 20%, then they get to take $200,000 and I only get, get 800,000, you know what I mean? So I'm not meeting with them about VC, I'm meeting with them about content creation and creators and like that's just an area I'm very well versed in. So I'm chatting with them about that. And um, then after that, I have to go to the doctor, but I don't know if I'm gonna go because it's the gynecologist and I'm bleeding, so I don't really wanna go see her right now. So we'll see what happens, but that's my day. That was TMI, sorry. Okay, if you judge my hair right now, I'm so sorry, but we're getting ready now to, we're getting ready to go to a event with Nikon, who are the people who gave me this camera that you are watching me on at the current moment. Oh, I'll recap my day, and we're gonna get ready with my new stuff from Sephora. I was shooting a brand deal with Sephora, and I've had these products for like two weeks. And I finally shot it, so now we can actually try them out. So I'm very excited. So the campaign was about shipping. It wasn't about the products. So the point was that. So it's not like I was plugging the products without trying them. Cause I wouldn't do that to you, but I'm, so to finish recapping Wharton, I feel like it's a really good opportunity for me personally for the following reasons. Um, one is I know that I don't want to be in the corporate world like forever. Um, no shade to it. And like, maybe that my mind will change on that later in my life. But as of right now, Corporate America is just not my favorite thing and in this stage of my life. I think for a lot of people it is, it does work for them at certain stages, but for me I just think that like I would really, really like to be doing something that has a little more flexibility and something that I can own for myself and that just means a lot to me. So for that, with that being said, I, th I was considering avoiding going to Wharton and just like dropping out of it altogether because of one like I've mentioned to you guys in the past like all the people in tech are super against business school um they're all like don't go just like stay yes we need the winter color because can you can you even believe that they're like don't go just stay here and work here you can learn just as much here as you can work learn in business school and while i do think that was true probably 10 years ago when these companies were startups and they were scaling it's not the same anymore um and if i look at the future when i look at the chain of command like i don't want anybody's job who's above me and that is a always a red flag so for that reason, like, that's why I, like, decided not to listen to those people. And the other part is that it's so expensive. But for me, I'm, one, gonna apply to scholarships, and two, the th cool thing is that I can actually basically, like, 
still make money while I'm in business school. And so I, even if I don't get scholarships or whatever, since I'm a content creator and an influencer, I could still make money at that time, even though most people have to quit their jobs and they don't make any money for those two years and they just have to live on loans. And that's not something like I would wanna do, but because I now have this other stream of income, I could actually use that to pay. And I think that would be like really, helpful for me. So, so with all of that in mind, I think it makes sense to go because one, I'll have more time to work on my business because like I said to you guys earlier, grades don't matter in business school. So even though I do want to go to learn because I want to know how to do corporate finance, I want to know how to scale a business. Like I want to take management classes, blah, 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 blah. Even though I'll still want to learn, I won't have the pressure of school. Plus, since it's a business school, there's lots of people always trying to like invest or do pitch competitions or work on startups and startups are like a hot thing. And finally, like the access to the network of like being able to meet people who worked in the industries that I need help in. I just think that it's, it's a no brainer. If I wanted to stay at Google for the rest of my career, then I wouldn't, or, or in tech or in that creator space, sure, which I do love the creator space and I hope to be a part of it for a very long time, but I can do that otherwise. That's like, I would have, I would stay because I love my job. But even though I love my job, something that I've learned in adulthood is that you have to leave things before you're ready because you're usually ready. <laughs> like, um, you can always figure it out, you know? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. See, ugh, that's why I shouldn't preach to you guys because I'm still a dumb bitch. <laughs> like, come on. Girl, I just applied powder, my regular go-to foundation, and I did it on the Refi Beauty brush. This is the one Monet McMichael has. Yeah, yeah, it's giving. Then this morning I had a coffee chat with the girl at Bessemer. It was cool. Just got to learn more about what they do and how they work with creators. Then um, I was gonna go to the gynecologist and did not, thank God. Okay, I have to do this in the mirror. Coffee chat with the Bessemer people also just made me remember how when I was still in college, I really wanted to work in VC. Not because I knew anything about it, but because it was like prestigious. Um, that's what I was deeply obsessed with external validation and how I want to like explore it again because like I said I'm not interested in taking VC but it is right for a lot of companies watch me take VC one day too like who really knows like my mind could change I don't know though because I do still want to be like own full owner of my company anyways now then I came home I grabbed some groceries at Trader Joe's Jesus may or may not have eaten approximately one fourth of my bag of peanut butter pretzels already but early dinner and then I took a bath like while I'm on PTO I've just been taking midday baths okay now we're doing my hair I'm just gonna show you exactly how I refresh my hair on a daily basis when it's curly. I feel like I haven't had a curly like prolonged for a really long amount of time. Um, and that's simply because I'd had braids for like a month and I think it's because the seasons are changing and things feel like they were a long time ago. July was two months ago. No, it was three. See, I'm not crazy. Anyway, empty, cool, embarrass me like that. But yeah, I feel like it's been curly for a minute now, so. Love that, but now I'm like, okay, when I go back to LA, what do I want to do my hair? Should I get braids again? Also, funny story, this morning I was recording my Sephora brand deal, and tell me why, guys, tell me why I recorded the whole video, like, I'm editing it um, to send it to them, and every time I go this way, there's something in my hair. So I look at my hair after I edit it, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? It was a leaf a leaf that I found in my hair. I slept. I it, it was first thing in the morning that I recorded this. Like it was not like I recorded it after being outside and going on a walk. No. That means that first of all, after I spent all day in Philly yesterday, who knows when this leaf 
entered back here in my hair. I spent all day in Philly yesterday. I take the Amtrak home with the leaf in my hair. I come home back to my apartment with the leaf in my hair. Jeff doesn't notice it. I take a full shower with the leaf in my hair. Go to sleep with a leaf in my hair. It's giving dirty, it's giving dusty, it's giving disgusting. And, I'm in, uh, and I was going to take a shower and wash it earlier, but I'm going to do that when I get home tonight because I had to go to this event. So, can you fucking believe that? So I had to reshoot everything and redo the whole deal because I looked fucking crazy. with a And it wasn't a big leaf. <laughs> it's not like a this big. It was like the size of a fingernail, but still, like, can you... That is dirty behavior, and I don't stand for it. So anyway, I, I was telling you about refreshing my hair. I just spray it thoroughly and put on curls, and then I eco-style down my the top of my head, and then it typically lifts every so often when I'm walking, but whatever. Now I'm just doing that down. You see how... My forehead does that. Why? Why can't we just look normal in 2022? All right, that is all. I think I might end the vlog after this event because who knows how long I've been speaking to you. And also, tomorrow I've got to send this footage to my editor. And since I've been talking so long, it's been taking like 14 hours to upload. So I love you expedit a good amount. I love you extremely much. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you in the next vlog. Love you, bye.